You've seen that bank interleaving is something that happens inside every chip of a dual inline memory module to reduce latency and, when coupled with prefetching, to greatly increase the operating speed of the DIMM. The principle of bank interleaving can be seen in this diagram. When a DRAM read request is initiated, there's a delay before a bank can output any data. When a burst of data is finished, the bank then has to recover before it can produce another burst. But data bursts can be initiated in successive banks without having to wait, resulting in a continuous flow of data after an initial delay. By the time the last bank has finished, the first bank is ready to go again. Let's now consider how bank interleaving can be controlled by the way in which the bits of a memory address are mapped to rows, columns and banks. We'll begin with some basic counting. Look closely and you'll see that these are nothing more than sequential binary numbers. Here are the denary values. These are the memory addresses that we'll apply to our model. Let's continue counting. With nine bits available, we could keep on counting all the way up to 511. But this will be enough memory addresses to illustrate the principle. Here's just one of eight banks inside one of eight chips. It's the first bank of eight, so it's numbered bank zero. Each array in this particular bank has eight rows, numbered from zero to seven, and eight columns numbered from zero to seven. To interleave bursts of four bytes across eight separate banks like this one, the memory address bits can be allocated as follows. The three most significant bits will encode the row address. The next most significant bit will be the first part of the column address. The next three bits identify a bank, and the two least significant bits will be the remaining part of the column address. Separating the bits of the column address like this may seem rather peculiar, but as you'll see in a moment, this clever little trick is at the heart of the bank interleaving system. During a sequence of read or write operations, a memory address is presented to the DIM. This particular address specifies row 0 and column 0 within bank 0. This is the starting point of a burst. The four columns numbered from 0 to 3 are read in close succession. There are eight arrays in this bank which share the same row and column address, so it's a burst of four bytes. Individual memory addresses don't need to be supplied for each column. The DIM is configured to perform the burst automatically. Each column nevertheless does have its own address. Notice that only the two least significant bits of each memory address are changing. In other words, the column addresses are growing incrementally from 0 to 3. To cater for the burst length, the next memory address presented to the DIM is four increments bigger than the previous address given. Notice that the row and column addresses are the same as before, but the bank address has changed. Another burst of four bytes is delivered, but this time from a different bank, namely bank one. The next address presented is also four bigger than before, specifying row zero and column zero in bank two. Another burst from bank two this time, then bank 3, bank 4, and so on. The real beauty of this arrangement becomes apparent when we return to bank 0 for another burst. This time, the most significant bit of the 3-bit column address has changed to a 1. So the memory address now specifies column 100, that is, column number 4. Another burst is delivered, but from a different starting position in the row. And consecutive bursts continue to be delivered by consecutive banks. Eventually, it's the turn of bank zero again, but notice this time that the least significant bit of the row address 
has changed from zero to one, and the most significant bit of the column address is zero again. The next burst therefore comes from row one and column zero in bank zero. And so it continues. Of course, this is just a model, but the same principle applies on a much larger scale and with much bigger rectangular arrays. And, depending on the design, a dim could have more or fewer banks and a longer or shorter burst length. As long as the number of banks in a chip and the burst length are powers of two, then controlling the way data are interleaved between the banks is just a matter of deciding how to assign the address bits.